Today I'm going to do a very brief review on Boulder Creek Engineering's Way Station Track Scale. This is a new addition to my layout. It was featured in my uh, New Year's Day video. Uh, I just got this done, installed, and uh, a few people had had some requests about seeing it in operation and how it works, so I'm going to give a real brief tutorial on this, how this particular product works. So over here you can see the uh, scale set up in my yard. Um, when you get this uh, Boulder Creek Engineering Way Station, it basically comes with uh, two parts. The faceplate that I just showed, and then there is an optical infrared sensor and detector, which is actually right here where my finger is, which uh, detects the rail cars and it communicates back with the um, facial fascia display. Now, the installation was very easy. Drill a 3 8 inch hole straight down through uh, through the uh, the road bed and the sub road bed, uh, I created a piece out of um, 16th inch uh, styrene. You drill a 11/15 uh, hole for the uh, detector. You drill a 3/8 inch hole for the emitter, and that's how you're able to mount it. So I'm going to give you a close up here of how the mounting device actually worked. So again, kind of looking at this from up above. You can see uh, the emitter is right there, the detector is right there. Again, 3 8 inch hole all the way down through the uh, road bed and the sub road bed. Um, the detector is one unit. Push that up through the hole you drill. Um, you can, again, you can uh, manufacture a small piece of styrene or something to go over top of it. But how this works is once a rail car goes over it, it will activate the detector, allow us to do the readings on the scale. Then the cool thing is to calibrate the scale back down to zero or to mimic the load leaving the scale. Right here, the gap between the rail cars, the um, sensor and detector are not activated, so it'll go back down to zero. And then as the rail car moves over it, it'll go ahead and activate and give another reading. Here are the instructions that come with the device. There's one for the infrared detector. Uh, again, basically this just tells how to install it. And you can, you can actually see this on the website. Installation on this is very easy. Once you get the face plate, face plate mounted, there are four wires coming off here. Blue, yellow, red, and black. Uh, we actually don't use the yellow one. We just... Uh, wire all these up to the face plate, wire up a power source to the face plate, and we're good to go. And here is the instructions for the actual station itself. Again, you can find these on the Boulder Creek website if you want to take a closer look at them. It gives instructions for two different types of track. Uh, mine is a single track. Um, mostly because I really wanted to do this Gantlet track where you use two turnouts because uh, prototypically you don't want to park rail cars on a scale because it could cause them to be um, malfunction. So they would, you know, railroads would use this gantlet type track where the scales are on those two tracks. When the scales are not in use, they close off that route. So then if you're gonna park a rail car on there, you're not going to damage the scale. So. I would love to have been able to do that. I just simply did not have enough space on this layout to do that. So you can see I'm zoomed back in on the scale here. I do want to reiterate, the scale itself uh, is not included. This is a Walther's kit. Uh, you can get the Walther's track scale kit. It actually comes with two complete separate um, units. So this is the single track unit and they do have um, a, a, a gantlet type track in there. So. You know, again, if, you, if that's something that you want to do, Walther's does have a kit for that, and you can, you can um, certainly uh, create that type of a, a scale setup. One thing that this does not come with, it does not come with its own power source. So if you are looking to purchase this, you're going to have to have a provision in place to uh, provide a power source for it. Uh, again, go ahead and take a look at the Boulder Creek Engineering website. Um, it gives uh, examples of what can be used for power source. I'm using a 12-volt DC power source. 
um, which it's actually, it powers my Grade Crossing Pro in my um, block animator for my signals on the layout. It, uh, so I actually am using the Rail, um, Rail Logics 12-volt um, power converter. Um, you know, again, that could be an issue for some guys who don't have, you know, uh, a, a suitable power source available for this. It's not just a simple plug-and-play. You have to have the two wires that wire into the back of uh, the display here. Operational, real simple. Um, when you have power applied to it, it's going to read zero. So I can run rail cars over it without any issues right now because I actually have it switched off. If I want to start weighing cars, simply flip that switch up. You have a toggle switch over here with three settings, A, B, and C. A represents a loaded rail car, B represents an empty rail car, and C is actually for doing scale testing. So um, I'll give you, a, I'll show you. I do have a scale test car here that I got. Bachman makes them. Um, so again, you could simulate doing a scale uh, test or a calibration for it. The other cool thing about this um, scale is you can change the settings because obviously not every rail car has weighs the same empty and that they all don't weigh the same when they're fully loaded so depending upon what commodity you're hauling you can adjust the scale so you're giving a prototypical reading for that particular unit. So I'm going to run these gondolas through the uh, scale here in just a second. Um, if you're unsure of what your car should weigh as it goes through um, you can take a look at the markings on the side of the car. The capacity for, in this particular example is 200,000 pounds. So that is what it's uh, rated to hold. The load limit is 207,000 pounds. So anything above that, this car would be considered unsafe. And then the tear weight or the, the light weight of this car is 61,000 pounds. So to make sure that the scale is adjusted properly, there's a toggle switch on the back of it. And right now the toggle switch, um, it has three positions, low, run, and high. You have to have it in the run position to do the scale testing. If you slide it to the low position, it will run through and give you the ability to change the lower weight limit on the scale. And then if you toggle it over to high, it'll give you an opportunity to adjust the upper weight limit. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to adjust this. So. Right now, I have my toggle switch up to the A position, which would simulate a loaded rail car. So, on the back, the scale is going to display a range, and I'm going to set the upper and lower limits of what that range is for the fully loaded position. So, as you run a rail car through, it's not going to give you the same setting every single time. So, again, that, that toggle switch that I just showed you. I'm going to start it out in the low position. So this will be the lowest limit weight possible that will be displayed when I weigh this rail car. So I'm going to go ahead and slide that over. So it's at 10,000. This is all automated. It's doing it all, all, all on its own. So I want to get it up to, since the capacity on this car is 200,000, I'm going to set this at 190 so I have my finger on the switch. And once I get it back up to 190, I'm going to switch it. There we go. So that's now flashing the lower weight limit. Now I'm going to switch it over to the high position. So you can see that it starts a countdown from 400,000. So the range that this scale will read is a lowest of 50,000 pounds and a maximum of 400,000 pounds. So again, I want this to be right at 200,000. So then when I go ahead and, and do a test scale of a fully loaded rail car, it should be between, it's going to read between 190 and 200,000. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this down to the unloaded position. And again, I'm going to start down low. So this car should weigh dry scale at about 60,000 pounds. So it's going to start a count up from 10,000. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this over. It's up at 60. So that's my low weight limit. And now it's going to do the countdown. This is going to be the upper end of the range. 
And I'm actually going to make this, as it was flashing there, 70,000. So then the dry weight on this rail car should be between 60 and 70,000. And again, you can change this. It is a little bit of a time consuming process, as you can see. But if you're, you know, going to weigh, you know, uh, you know, a small two bay coal car versus, uh, you know, 45 or 47, 50 cubic uh, foot covered hopper. There we go. So I messed it. I was going to do 70 and I was talking too much. So it should dry scale on this or the dry weight on this should be right at about 60,000. Anyway, that's how you, whoops, that's how you set the scale up and you know, you, you can adjust this for whatever your needs are for your particular layout. So again, here is my scale car, the, the um, calibration car that a lot of railroads have. You know, again, that's just something that they use to make sure that the scales are reading correctly and that they're not either overcharging or undercharging the customer for the loads that they're hauling. So, I'll probably do a video here Oh, in the next little bit about um, doing an actual calibration of the scale and showing how that works with these scale test cars. Okay, now we're ready to run the test here. One thing I did do, I did go back and reset the upper level for the empty rail car to 70,000 pounds. Otherwise, if I would have left it as, as it was, it would have read every single car at 60,000 pounds. So you want to have a difference between your low read and your high read, so it gives some variation as the cars are moving through. So I'm going to slowly back these cars across the scale, and what you're going to notice is once the rail car um, breaks the plane of the infrared sensor, it's going to give a reading. There it goes. And then it gives an audible alert when the value has been read. There you can see it picked up the signal between the two cars. I'm going to go ahead and stop this here. And I'm going to get these cars off the scale. Prototypically you would never run a mo locomotive through the scale so I'm not going to. Um, and from an operational perspective you can do one of a couple things. You can run the rail cars across the scale slowly like I just did or you can put them on the scale and actually stop the car while it gets the weight. So in this particular instance I just slowly rolled through and that's what a prototypical railroad is going to do. I'm going to go ahead and switch this up to a position A which will simulate a loaded car and we're going to do the same thing again. Just slowly back these through. If you remember I set the upper level to be um, around 200,000 pounds. So we'll go ahead and let this roll through. So this one reads 194,400. Gives me the alert, so I would record that value. And there you can see now it's picking up the second car, 198,000. And it'll keep that reading until the infrared sensor doesn't detect a rail car, so I can go ahead and stop the train and move it back forward. And then there you can see it'll go back down to zero and it's going to pick up the weight of the other car. So this is a really cool product. I'm going to let the train roll through here. Um, Another cool thing, this does have an output where it will actually send the um, readings to a computer. I don't have that part set up yet, and I have to do a little bit of investigating on how to do that. So there is an output where you can, if you have compatible software and a compatible machine, you can actually um, export these values, or you know you can write them down manually like they used to do in the old days. Um, Again, I had this product from boxed installed in about, oh, probably about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. I had to run some wires, probably the longest thing it, it took to cut the opening in the fascia to get that all squared away, get the holes drilled. So 
I, I would guess probably about an hour, hour and a half to get this thing from from the box to operational. I'm very satisfied with it. Um, I think it just adds another level of realism to my layout, which I, you know, obviously that's what I'm striving for. I think it goes without saying this gives an estimate of what a rail car weight is. It's not a real scale. Um, I don't want to give anybody the impression that this is actually weighing the rail cars in a scale weight. It is just giving a readout of what it would be if it was, uh, you know, fully loaded. In this case, uh, you know, gondola. Um, so it doesn't provide actual weights. It just gives a reading of what the weight would be if we were actually doing this for real. So highly recommend this product. I bought it direct from the manufacturer. I think with tax and shipping and everything, it was like $110, $115, something along those lines. I'd highly recommend it. It's a great piece for, for my layout. So if you have any questions, please give me a comment. Thanks.